I know no matter what um, at the tournament, I'm going to have so many fans, um, family, friends, coaches back at home just coming. It's a 10 to 15 minute drive. Um, so I'm just super excited to see everyone in the stands and for the support when we play the games. Where do you find a family of communities connected by the storied Mississippi River, where young explorers and dreamers, investors and entrepreneurs thrive? Where can you connect with real people living and creating in a place that's as genuine as it is quirky? QC, that's where. Hello, everyone. Welcome to QC That's Where podcast. I'm your host, Valia, today. I know you guys are used to seeing Katrina, but I could not pass up this opportunity to get to interview the one and only Grace Buffelli, one of the best basketball players I know. Grace, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, Grace, for the for people that don't know, kind of talk about how you know, where you're from, where you went to high school, where you play basketball now, um, and then we'll just get kind of into it. Yeah, so I I went to North Scott High School, um, and now I play basketball at Northern Iowa. I am a fourth year, and I'm going to play my next year, my COVID year, so I have one more year after this year. Yay, that is yeah. so fun. Uh, yep. so, so you're from the Quad Cities, which is really exciting, Quad City native. Yep. Um, and playing for you and I, kind of close. Do your parents get to come to a lot of your games, family, old coaches? Yeah, um, I don't think my parents have missed a game since really I've gotten into college. Um, and then my aunt, uncles, sister, brothers, they always come too. So yeah, I have a strong support system. Um, and it also helps that I only live two hours away. So yeah. It's pretty exciting. I know like picking colleges can be kind of intimidating. Um, like when I picked to go to Iowa State, I was like, well, I know like I'm only three hours away. It's a perfect distance for like your family to be able to come if they need to, but you also feel like you're independent and you kind of have your own life outside of yeah. your yeah. parents. Um, yeah. So let's kind of talk about the beginning of the season or where you guys are at now. Well, yeah. you're 10 and five in conference, which is huge. Um, very exciting. You're fifth in the NBC. You just had a huge win against Murray State, 89 yep. 87. That was awesome. And um, what that was your coach's. Um, she's now the like the most wins in the NBC now. I saw that. I got uh, 202 wins. Oh my gosh. She's such mm -hmm. a stud. She's yeah. so awesome. Uh, I saw the video of you guys. I think it was you and Kaba maybe um, pouring water on her. Pouring water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After we won. Yeah. That I was think, fun. I think she was kind of expecting you guys to do that because she kind of came in like, Ooh. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and then a lot of the players just kept going. I thought it was going to stop. Yeah. And then <laughs> I don't know who was following me. Like, ah! <laughs> we just went for it. Uh, when, in your recruiting process, was she a big part of why you wanted to go to you and I? Yeah, I got recruited kind of late in high school. Um, I think it was my junior year, going into junior year. And you and I actually was like the first school that reached out to me. Um, they recruited me at the, ca the camp that they had in the summer. And then the next day I just kind of committed. Um, so I, it was a quick decision, but yeah, the coaching staff was very supportive. And then when I went on the um, visit, they're so supportive and super nice and I know I wanted to come here. That always makes it a lot easier when yeah. it feels like a family, you know, you're going to be, you know, safe and you get to play the sport you love. So that always yep. helps. Um, and then you guys just had a really big uh, win against Southern Illinois, 74 51, which was huge. And then you have a big game against Drake coming up. How are you guys preparing their what number one in the MVC right now? Yep. So um, what are you guys doing to, to get prepared for that? Drake, it's always a rivalry. Um, they beat us last time a few weeks ago. Um, I think it was under 10 points. So it'll be a close game. Um, it's going to be hard, but we're really excited. I think those like in-state rivalries are the best. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think they bring a lot of, you know, attention, media attention. People come out. It's a, usually a bigger crowd. Uh, it's really fun. And I don't know. It just, it just is kind of a little more exciting to yeah. prepare to play when you're when it's you probably have played with a lot of the girls on Drake before maybe like in travel ball or in yeah school. and we played I'm just growing up all the time and so yeah we're super excited the environment's gonna be good at the nap center and yeah 
it'll be it would be a really good win going into yeah. the Missouri Valley Conference yep. tournament. Uh, so that's coming up soon. Obviously, it's in the Quad Cities. Talk about how you know, exciting or fun it is to kind of have that home court advantage for you. Um, not necessarily that it's you and I, but because you're from the Quad Cities. Yeah, it's super exciting. Um, just to think about March, because I know no matter what, um, at the tournament, I'm going to have so many fans, um, family, friends, coaches back at home, just coming. It's a 10 to 15 minute drive. Um, so I'm just super excited to see everyone in the stands and for the support when we play the games. When do your like teammates know you're from the quad city. So when you're coming in, like on the bus, you're like, Oh, that's where I used to <laughs> do you ever do that? Or, um, yeah, sometimes. And like last year, um, we actually practiced at the pit, um, <gasps> twice, I think. Fun. And then we ate at my house. So hopefully that's going to happen again this year. Um, so yeah, it was fun to go back to my high school. I was going to, I was going to say like, I love bragging about the quad cities, I mean, you move away for a little bit and then I come back actually. And I brought a lot of my teammates from who were like from California and Texas. And they're like, the quad city is like just farmland. Like, where am I going to go? And then I bring them. Yeah. And like, Wait, <laughs> <laughs> this is so much more than I thought. I'm like, I know you guys just have to give the quad cities a chance. So did people kind of have a, you know, a skewed view of what the quad cities was before they came? I, I mean, I don't really think they realized how much stuff is in the quad cities. Um, but it was just fun to like bring them to my house. And then like, even I think a few weeks ago we won at Bradley. And so after we win, we usually get smoothies or ice cream. So we stopped in the quad cities at tropical or at smoothie King oh, in Bad North. And I'm like, we're in the quad cities. <laughs> this is where I'm from. I thought you guys were, I thought you were going to say you took them to like Whitey's or whatnot. Oh no. I wish Whitey's is so good. So what do you, what do you usually get? I like the um, banana gram. You know what's funny you say that is we do like polls in our office to see yeah. what everyone likes. So I wrote on our, we have a whiteboard that we can draw on. I wrote on it and I was like, okay, what's everyone's go-to Whitey's order? And I'd never heard of banana gram and like four different people wrote it's it. It's so good. So I need to make sure I get it the next time yeah. because that just, it's funny whenever I'd come back from college for like Christmas break, Thanksgiving, I'm like, we have to go to Whitey's right yep. this second. And it's always busy. It's always a long line, but and whenever I have friends come in town, I'm like, we have to take them to Whitey's. It's the best. So I'm going to have to try a banana gram. I think so I good. usually get moose tracks. Yep, that's good too. Cookie dough. I don't know. It's just a Quad City staple. And like the Whitey's in Eldridge is always packed. Yes. There's always a line. There's always a line. I've gone there yep. a couple times. and I'm I like, know. It's just the whole town's there. Uh, when you guys practice at the pit, which for people that don't know, North Scott's uh, gym. Did you get to like walk them around the high school? Like this was my locker. <laughs> no, I wish, but they were like in school last year. So like, I think like my athletic or North Scott's athletic director was kind of like blocking off the students from like watching our practice. But I don't know if we're going to go there or not this year. Cause I think North Scott's going to be on spring break. Yes. I don't know. I think it's during spring break, which is really exciting because I'm hoping that more students and young, you know, yeah. athletes go and watch you guys uh, at the Vibrant Arena so they can watch basketball, especially women's basketball is in like the heart of media right now with Caitlin Clark. I mean, with Grace yep. Buffelli, Maya McDermott, like the <laughs> whole UNI team. Um, how does it feel to kind of, you know, inspire, not it, like you guys are truly inspiring the next generation of of student athletes yeah like you said um women's basketball is definitely um it's bringing it's I don't even know like just coming more to the news everything um the whole Caitlin Clark Angel Reese like that all thing but just like even like at you and I like more people are coming to our games and like you can just see that like women's basketball it's it, like it's here um and just it's just super exciting like after games there's just little like kids wanting us to sign things and it's, it's just super heartwarming like oh my gosh like we're making an impact on young lives and it's just really excited for the future you you truly are I, it's so fun to watch how many how much more people are going to your games yeah. um just be with social media even because like everything is being posted, fun videos, you get mm -hmm. to see people's personality. Like 
I don't know a whole lot of like the players on you and I, besides like a yeah. couple, but even the video of you like pouring water on your coach, you got to see different teammates personality yeah. and it's just fun to watch that. And it's inspiring young people. More games are on TV, like uh-huh. ESPN are picking up games. You've got all of these like Fox, CBS. Yeah. It's just crazy to like, because a couple of years ago, yeah. even like while you were still in college, you would never imagine how. Yeah how crazy basketball is does it does it add kind of more fuel to the fire does it make you more nervous or I think it's just exciting um just to play in front of a big crowd um in front of a lot of people but just talking about like environments um the Iowa game was obviously a really fun game um we had some injuries during that game so the outcome wasn't how we wanted it but it was just a super cool memory that like McLeod was packed and it was just fun I think it's cool too when young athletes come to your games because at the end of the day, they don't care if you're like yeah. the star player. Yep. Like not everyone has to be Caitlin Clark. They're just excited to be in the same gym as you. And like, you could be on the bench. You could never play. You could just, you know, have that uniform on and they're like, can you please sign my <laughs> ball or my hat or whatever? Yeah. Um, it's just heartwarming. It yeah. makes me so happy. I don't know. As like a former student athlete too, I'm like, oh, how many athletics are just on the up and like up yeah. and come up? We just had um division three women's wrestling mm. in the Quad Cities. Yeah. Have you ever watched women's wrestling? I have not. But it's it's it's, it's I've seen so many things on social media, like it's so popular. It is crazy. I went to the I went to the math. I was like, these girls are ruthless. Oh my They're gosh. Crazy. You'll have to like, I mean, it's becoming more and pop more popular. I know you and I is like very big for men's wrestling. So yeah. I would be surprised if like women got a team in the next yeah. couple of years or whatnot. But Grace, that stuff is <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like these girls I are, bet they yeah, are- I've seen stuff on social media like the women's state, I don't know, a few weeks ago yeah. and like Iowa wrestling girls and stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's so crazy. Well, really excited to have you come back to the Quad Cities. Are there any places, like your favorite places, whenever you come back in town, you have to go? Oh, um, I always have to go to 392 Cafe. That's I'm a me, I'm obsessed with that place. Me, it's okay. The vibes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I love Smoothie King. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have a Chipotle in Cedar Falls. <laughs> so you know I always have to go to Chipotle. Oh, it's so good. 392. What do you get at 392? Um, I like the toast with peanut butter and the strawberries. Oh my gosh. It's literally, I know I could like do that at home, but it's just way yeah. better at 392. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I like the super monkey, like, um, drink the, with like, the, the, yeah, the protein. Yeah. Dr- oh my yes. gosh. Will you be like, will your teammates and you, when you come for the conference tournament, will you be able to like go out and about? Um, if we get like, if we, we're going to win. Yes. Um, so after wins, <laughs> we usually get like smoothies or something. So maybe if we have like a day game, we can go get a, something like a 392 or yes. smoothie king. Um, but before every game, we have to go to Starbucks. So we'll obviously making a trip to Starbucks. I don't, obviously it's always like coffee. I don't yeah. know if you've seen like on TikTok, all those funny videos of teams that are like traveling. They're like, trying to find a local coffee shop or yeah. coffee shop around just so we can get our coffee yeah. before before a game it's just what everyone has to do what's your go-to order oh I like the just a shaken espresso it's the way to go it gets you kind of it pumped is. up for the game do you have like a do you have any superstitions before a basketball game oh um yeah I have a few I have to at home games I have to eat the same thing so I always have a smoothie Okay. What's in your smoothie? I actually go to Tropical Smoothie and I get a smoothie called Blimey Limey. Okay. <laughs> I've seen that on the menu. Is it, is it good? Um, let me think. What else? That's kind of it. Just what I yeah. eat. Yeah. I had some teammates in college who were like so crazy and they had to do the exact same thing. And I used to be like that. I remember one time in high school too for a track me I had these special socks they had hot sauce on them and I forgot to bring them to a meet and I yeah. literally freaked out had my mom call me out of class oh my gosh went home to find it couldn't find it freaking out I was like I'm gonna run horribly blah, blah ended up running like a PR I'm like okay that's when superstitions are out because I was like 
if I have superstitions, like I'm going to freak out. I'm not going to be able to, but eating is one thing. Like I would do that too. I'd always eat yeah. the same thing. There's some teammates that had to do the same exact hair. Do you have people in, in high school? I used to wear the same spandex and same socks, Yeah, but I'm not like that now. I've, no. I've changed. Yeah. <laughs> you- I've realized that it, none of it really matters. No, really. It's, it just, it kind of depends on the atmosphere, how you play your mindset. Yep. Do you have like a certain um, playlist or songs? You have I do play? have a certain playlist, but it doesn't have to be the same songs every time. Do you get to be on Ox ever? Or are people like, no, I don't really like being on Ox. I just let some other teammates take it away. <laughs> I was going to say like, I never got to be on Ox. I wanted to play One Direction. That's so like weird announcing that. <laughs> no, but I like One Direction. They okay, you do? Yeah. I'm yeah. hoping that they, I'm hoping they come back. As a band, I don't think it's going to ever happen. One Direction's pretty good. I also like sad music. I don't know. It gets me like, yeah. it gets me mm. ready to go. Yeah. Okay. I have some fun questions for you. Okay. So if you could play any other sport besides basketball, what would it be? Probably volleyball. Did you, you played in high school? I played, I played for a few years in high school. Did you see the new rule that was just passed? Yeah, the no doubles now. Yeah, so setters can just <laughs> wait. Like I know, like I see, I've seen a lot on TikTok. Like some people are mad about it. Yeah, because they're like, I don't know, and some people are happy. I think the setters are mad because they trained their whole life to not yeah. double, but now the middles are happy because they're like, watch out, <laughs> I'm it's, setting the ball. It's gonna be interesting. It will be interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you ever move back to the quad cities after college yes um maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know I don't know what my future holds right but maybe yeah because you do you do have one more year of college right. basketball what yep. are I know you still are focusing on like the end of this year you still yep. have a lot of season left you know conference postseason run yep. um what are your goals though kind of looking into next year basketball school life um, I don't know. Um, probably just take it day by day. Um, just, I mean, I'm almost done with college, which is crazy. Time really does fly. Um, but just to probably try to figure out what I want to do after college is probably my biggest goal. Um, I'm studying elementary education, so I don't know what I want to do, uh, where I want to teach, but we'll figure it out. That's very cool. Do you have like a grade in mind? Uh, I like the upper grades, I, I think that's like third and up. I think that would be so good. You'll be such yeah. a great teacher. Be, I don't know how many kids are in the class now, like 20 bajillion. Well, I think of like, for my like participation weeks I've done, um, it's like 25, 20. Yeah. Wait, that. Have you had to do student teaching yet? I'm doing that next year, but I've done like my level ones, level twos and level threes. And then I'm doing eight weeks of student teaching before season starts and eight weeks after season. So you get a little break in, but. I'm splitting it up, which is rare, but I think the NCAA has to approve of it, but it will. That's so cool. So did you have to work with like your counselors, your coach, just to get. My my athletic advisor. Yeah. Yeah. So is your coach pretty good with, you know, working with everyone's schedule? I know once you get like junior, senior year, it gets really hard because there's classes you have to take. And sometimes it's only one time during the day and it could be during your practice time. So she pretty good at managing schedules and. Yeah. Know. Coach Warren's super um, understandable with that stuff. Like a girl on my team right now, she has class um, twice a week and we practice in the afternoon and she has it like three o'clock. So she only can practice for like an hour, but then she has to go. Cause you can't do much about it. And education is important too. When you're still playing basketball. Yeah. I think it's really awesome when coaches like you know they value your sport obviously like you're there to play basketball you know that yeah it's why you went to you and I but they mm-hmm. also value education because at the end of the day it's very minimal that you know student athletes women's athletics they go and play professionally which I wish it was like more the case yeah. where there'd yeah. be yeah. opportunities but it's yeah. just not the case for everyone so for yeah. them to value you know, your education is mm-hmm. huge. Would you ever play professionally? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Probably not. I just kind of want to five years of basketball is it's a lot. 
it's a lot, but I'm very thankful for it. But I'm excited to also impact younger younger students in the future. Yeah, the future, the future Grace Buffelis. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my yeah. I don't know, like how's your body holding up? You're on your fourth <laughs> My body is holding up. Um, I actually, this season, uh, uh, non-conference, I actually fractured my clavicle. So I was out for a month and a half. Yeah. Um, but it's healthy now and I'm doing good. How does your mindset change? I mean, you were preseason NBC mm-hmm. player of the year. Yep. And you come out, you do great. You get an injury how do you kind of have to switch your mindset to be like, okay, I have to be a different role on my team until I'm healthy enough. Yeah. Um, I, I, I gained a new perspective. Um, after I got hurt, um, I was coaching from the sidelines, helping my teammates out, but I just kind of realized like, don't take anything for granted. Cause you really don't know what can happen. Um, like a girl, on my team, my roommate, she actually just had a knee in- injury, um, season ending, um, so like you really don't know what's gonna happen. So I think every day when I go to practice, I just work as hard as I can because you really don't know what's gonna happen. And then once I got back from my injury, um, that was also um something new because I'm not gonna be as good as I was right from the beginning of the season. Um, I've missed almost two months, but I'm starting to work back into it. Um, I'm in the flow, but the first two or three games coming back from my injury. It was tough, um, but it is what it is. And I'm, I'm learning to just give myself some grace. Yeah. Some gr- definitely. That was such a good answer. <laughs> I think it's tough. I mean, you're such a star player on the UNI basketball team. You know, people look to you, you're a leader. You're constantly putting up big numbers and then to have you on the bench, but I think your team, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I bet they were so grateful to have you helping them out, um, coaching them. I mean, you guys look like you are such a solid group. Like you get along well. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was like, good. I was like, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys look like you're having a blast, having fun along, you know, along the way. Obviously there's going to be bumps in the road, um, but it's cool that you have like multiple perspectives on your team. Yep. Coach Grace, would you ever yep. coach? Um, I actually was going to get my coaching minor, but I don't have enough time. So I think I'm just going to, after, um, after college, I'm just going to get that like certification. Yeah. I mean, so, you could be a, I want to be a coach in the future. I love that. I mean, you have yeah. so much knowledge. It makes the quad cities proud that you're yeah. from here and that you get to, you know, play and, and you're a great student as well. I was looking up all your, all your stats <laughs> on a roll. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. she's got a list. I was like, how much longer do I have to scroll on all of her stats? And That's you just, funny. you're just, um, what fourth or third on the rebounding, you and I all time rebounding list. You're two away from being the next, um, spot up. Oh, wow. I, I didn't even know that. And you got a whole nother year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm, I'm excited for you guys to come to the quad cities. It's just fun to have all these teams come experience. I mean, the fans are crazy. People are excited. Are your, are your parents ready? Are they already planning? Are they bringing everyone to quad cities? Probably. Probably, probably they all my family that. probably will be coming. Oh my gosh. There'll be like a whole Grace Buffelli fan. <laughs> I think ever like my last past three years, my neighbors and my, all my like family friends come and like I think um two years ago they held up like big heads of me oh my God. um and then last year they held up like the letters of grace so that they love so it cute. yeah they love it I mean like yes you're yeah. only a couple hours away yeah. from you know the quad yeah. city so they can go but to literally have a game like in your backyard yeah right there everyone can come. I know. I I wish more people could experience that. And of course, like the Quad Cities community as a whole is just so supportive of, you know, every event we bring in, but especially athletics and women's Mm -hmm. athletics. I, it's fun to see how excited they get. And so I'm hoping there's so many people there cheering you on, but cheering all the teams on, it's going to be a blast, fun fan zones. It's going to be crazy. Um, I don't know. I just, it's fun to just get to chat with you and see how you are. Cause I've yeah. known you in high school. You were a stud basketball player, but to see like how much you've grown, yeah. how much of a leader you are, you just, 
It's great. You had a win last night. You played well. We did win. Yep. You have an off day today? Uh, no, we got to prep for the Bulldogs. Grind never. <laughs> <laughs> prep for the Bulldogs. Yep. I, well, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to talk with me, get to hang out. This is more fun of an interview for me, I think, (laughs) than for you. I really appreciate it. Um, Well, we always, it's tradition. We have to end the podcast with fill in the blank. I gave you a little bit of time to think about it. So I've been thinking. Good. So fill in the blank. QC, that's where. Student student athletes thrive. Boom. For Grace Maffelli. That was (laughs) Grace, seriously, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was so fun to kind of hear your story, hear how excited you are to come back to the Quad Cities. We're rooting for you. We're rooting for the Panthers. Yes, go Panthers. Yes, we're rooting for women's athletics. Like, let's go. (laughs) Thanks for listening to QC That's Where, a podcast powered by Visit Quad Cities. Text Visit QC to 38314 for insider events, activities, and updates sent straight to your phone. That's V-I-S-I-T-Q-C, one word, to 38314. Message and data rates may apply. 